Hey friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I want to share with you some tips for writing hero mail. Your hero mail might go to um, American military personnel, which is where I intend these cards for, or to a variety of other people. But first I wanted to really quick share this new um, storage solution I had got. It's a stand up pencil case. So as you can see, I was able to unzip it. My Copic markers that I'm using for this particular project are stored inside. And then I was able to pull it down and it basically turns from a pencil pouch into a cup and I can see all of the caps. Uh, there are varieties available. I'm going to link to one, the one that I purchased on Amazon because it was readily available, but they, there's a lot of people sell them on Etsy. You can sew your own. And I just really like this for storing rather than like a cup because it's easier for me to transport, uh, to different areas of my house where I might be coloring or to travel with in the future. Okay. So back to the main video topic. I will be coloring this in the background. I'm going to be coloring in real time so that I have plenty of time to share my tips. The image is a digital stamp from Too Cute Ink of a bald eagle with an American flag. And like I said, these cards will eventually head to U.S. military personnel as thank yous. But uh, I think these tips could work for if you wanted to right now people are sending cards to doctors and nurses to encourage them sharing with grocery workers or postal workers because of some of the things that are are going on right now um in you know in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic I want this video to be able to last beyond the current moment um I think that there's a lot of people who need thanking regularly and I think you could even use some of these ideas if you want to share like um with people in hospitals or nursing homes too, even though it's not quite a thank you in that case. All the products that I'm using are going to be linked, including the Copic colors so that you can see, but I'm not going to focus on that. If you were to write some hero mail, the first thing that people, you know, think of is to thank them for their service. And I would certainly think that's a great place to start. And honestly, if that's all you want to include, just a simple thank you message, that's great. Also, feel free to make a connection. If you've served or someone in your family has served, reminding them that, you know, rather than in the military or in the healthcare field and just trying to make a connection with them and remind them um, of, of other people who are in the same situation or dealt with the same situation could be positive. But I generally recommend sharing with them just some positive things about what's going on in your life. So some things that you can talk about, sports. It can be national sports, but it could also be your kid's baseball game. You know, like if they did something really cool or fun, made an interesting play, like just sharing your happiness with them can be really encouraging. Share about your hobbies, your pets. Did one of them do something funny or your kids or share a special memory? So if you like I once wrote a letter about field day because we'd had field day recently at school and I kind of told them, hey, you know, some of the activities we did. And then I, you know, said, prompted them to think of some positive memories. Like, what did you do during field day when you were young? What was your favorite game? So, or sharing about your garden would also be a great one. Uh, if you don't want to share something as personal, you could share a joke, um, a funny story that you read somewhere or a comic book. You won't know the audience usually. So I would generally recommend keeping it pretty general, something that most people would find humorous. These suggestions come from working with organizations and donating to organizations over the year. So a shout out to Operation Gratitude, a million thanks, and Operation We Are Here. They have websites, uh, they have pages on their website that share some tips, and some of these tips are their tips. So I don't want you to think that you know this is completely my creation. Um, there will be a coordinating blog post where I'll write down all of these tips and suggestions, and I will link them. Okay, so most organizations say avoid politics completely, and I definitely agree. Um, I just don't think that is a very positive thing to share most of the time. And also you don't know what they that person will think. Uh, but some organizations say keep religious messages minimal, no religious messages, or encourage religious messages. So please check your organization. A simple praying for you is usually okay. But uh, I wouldn't want your card to not be able to be used by like a hospital that cause sometimes they can't share any religious messages because they don't have a religious affiliation. So just something to be aware of. 
Check with your organization if it's okay to share your contact information. Some organizations encourage you to share your email or your address in case the hero wants to write back. Of course, don't expect anything back, but if that is something you like, maybe you would like to have a pen pal, you know, that's something that you could include. But again, check with any particular organization you're donating to. This one's a great one. Get kids involved. Kids love to be involved. When I was a teacher, I would have kids write messages to soldiers on Memorial Day or Veterans Day and um, or we would write, we'd make cards for hospitalized kids on Valentine's Day because they were sharing cards with each other and it was a fun way to make a few more cards. Just be careful about including any personal information about kids, especially if they're not your own children. So we would just use first names. I wouldn't mention the school, their age, anything. I really wanted to keep it very generic, and that's what I would generally recommend. Do not include a date, year, or strong indicator of time. The organization may not be able to get your card to the recipient for months or a year just because of how long it takes them to process things. Um, So you don't, unless you're writing a card for a specific holiday, like people... Organizations will encourage like winter holiday cards, Christmas cards, etc. That's fine. But in terms of just your general card, you wouldn't want it to like them to realize that it's been months and months and months since you wrote to them. Consider including non-personal photos like photos of like landscape photos you've taken, photos of your garden, photos of your pets. You know, of course, be considerate of other people's privacy and personal information. You can include like close-up shots of things too, as not to share people's faces. But again, it just kind of reminds them of the things going on back at home um, or in sort of happier situations. So that can be a fun one. And then the last suggestion I, or well, mostly just the reminder that I wanted to give was you can actually, once you've composed a nice letter, you've you know thought of a good story or something that you wanted to share, you can actually use that same message in multiple cards. So you can write write out your letter and then copy it. And I really do suggest handwriting these and not typing them. It's a lot more personal. But then you can write it into five different cards. They can even be the same design, which is what I'm going to do today. I have the same design across multiple cards. And just when you send them to the organization, most organizations accept this. Again, check with your organization. But... You can bundle them together and just like make a note to the organization, hey, these all have the same message and they'll send it to different groups stationed in different places so that all the, you know, the time and thought that you put into that great story, that great message, you can, you know, brighten a few people's days with it. That is a general suggestion there. Other thing is I have a page on my blog Um, It's called the Card Drive Resources page, and it shares with you many places that you can donate your cards. A lot of people who followed my channel for a while know that I donate a lot of cards, and I make a lot of cards for that um, specifically. And when I share cards for hospitalized kids, I always include a joke, and on the Card Drive Resources page, there are a bunch of jokes. And since that was one of the suggestions I had, feel free to check that out. They are definitely a little more kid-oriented, the jokes, but that usually means that they're also, like, appropriate for anybody and they won't you know um be offensive although of course if you see a joke you're like hmm Justin you shouldn't include that let me know but I I I usually uh send them for kids so they should be good and yeah so those are all my suggestions I finished pretty much finished coloring here I decided to use cool grays for the flag and for the bald eagle because when I searched a picture of a bald eagle it did look a little bit more on the cool side to me personally and these are printed and then die cut with cat scrappiness stitched scallop squares. I have been using really simple blending throughout and here when I add the grass because there's a little bit of grass drawn into the digital image I'm gonna use some flicks of the marker where I start touching my marker very lightly to the bottom and then flick up as I pull it off and that's a great way to create a lot of different kinds of texture like hair as well but it's a really simple thing for grass and a great way and grass is a great way to practice um, that flicking technique and uh, work on it a bit. 
I'm going to use one really light color and one really dark color to add some interest to the grass. As I mentioned, all of the marker colors will be linked in the video description below. I use the E's 20s for the brown part of the eagle, Y38 and 35 for the yellow, C3, 1 and, and double zero for the white, and R39735 for the reds, B28 and 26 for the blues. Okay, so once I had that, I'm going to color a bunch of them, and that's why I put my markers in that bag so that, you know, I can color them over the course of a couple of days, carry them around the house, you know, if I'm watching TV in a different room or if I want to go outside and enjoy the sunshine for a bit, I can bring my coloring with me. I want to add a bit of dimension, so and you could add foam tape or foam squares. This is a piece of cardboard from some packaging that I got recently. And so rather than recycle it, which is great, of course, I just decided I could use it to back a large panel like this because it would give it a lot of stability but not too much thickness. I just placed that behind my image. The pattern papers that I'm using are from the uh, My Favorite Things Sweet Celebrations kit, but they're just really simple patterns. My Favorite Things has a lot of great simple patterns like if you want just like some you know stripes and dots and other simple things I, I like their pattern their pattern paper packs for that i'm going to use a sakura Sec i don't think i'm saying that right sakura a uh, jelly roll pen white here to just make the stars stand out on the flag a little bit because they were black before so hopefully it's given you some interesting details on the uh, card if that's what you were interested in I will link you to all the resources the blog posts I really hope you can find some time to send out some encouraging cards to different people if you send hero mail and you have any suggestions please leave them in the comments for other people to check out if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're interested in more crafting tutorials be sure to subscribe to my channel thanks so much bye